If there is one disclaimer that those of us who talk about the markets with regards to precious metals or anything, we can say just because it could happen doesn't mean that it will happen. And that is the thing that should be at the foremost part of your mind as I talk about how this metal that I'm going to be talking about in this video is probably the most uh, potential for an explosion in price. So without further ado, let's explore. Yes, there are certain things that I think are poised or primed for a potential explosion in price in the markets, especially if it's a tiny and relatively unstable uh, market and a very rare precious metal. Those are the combinations of things, especially with what I'm going to be talking about in this video that are going to really kind of put it all in perspective for you and why for several years I have been very bullish on this metal. And I love the metal for what it is. If we're looking at a $100 bill here, and this, when it's all said and done, is kind of uh, the, it's the highest denominated uh, bill that's in circulation today by the United States government. But in reality, it's just a piece of paper. Well, it's a piece of cotton fiber linen, technically, uh, but nonetheless, it holds a, uh, a certain uh, prestige among currencies out there. And when you think about the rarity of something, like a, a $100 bill, most of them are uncirculated condition because they just don't circulate as often. But they lose value. In fact, this dollar bill has lost about $3.30 just in the past year. And that's on top of its losses that, are, that it, that it, uh, that it uh, uh, you know, disappeared in the prior year to the tune of about $8. So that's about $11 over the past two years that this has lost value. But you know what? This metal here, platinum, it very well is the metal that is poised, I think, for a potential explosion in price down the road. Now, how long will that take? I don't know. Uh, I bought some of the, the most platinum I've bought uh, in years was back in 2020 when the price got down to about 600 and change an ounce. Yeah, now it's trading much higher, but even so, I've always been of the mindset that if platinum goes up to uh, you know, is anything less than $1,000 for platinum is a good deal. And as I record this video today, platinum's price is still very, very low. In fact, it's dropped about 24 bucks. But it's not about a single day's price movement of platinum because we're going to have days like this where it drops $24 in a day. And that's going to discourage a lot of platinum investors. Now, investment is the word that I want to use for platinum because it is much more of a speculative metal. It's a fringe precious metal. What do I mean by that? Is that it does not have a lot of the same type of uh, hedging uh, benefits uh, as a wealth preservation device. It's not really. Platinum is not a monetary metal, even though you see it monetized on coins. Uh, but for the vast majority of history, it was never even known to exist. It wasn't until the late 1700s that it, that it was the case. But I'm going to be referencing an article here from Shift Gold that talks about the platinum market and why it is important to consider uh, this metal as a way to diversify your portfolio. It doesn't approach having the same wealth protecting power of gold or silver, but platinum is a precious metal that just never really gets the love that it deserves. And part of what I do in this channel was to, to, uh, to bring it to you, to talk a little bit more about uh, platinum, because I believe in the metal even more than palladium. Palladium has come down dramatically. And some people say palladium is worth is more rare than, than platinum. But nonetheless, we're starting to see a, a shifting of the, of the uh, differences between two, those two metals, and they may reach parity again. They, they, they were there briefly. Uh, we can see that happen again soon. Practically speaking, other than jewelry, platinum is best known as a crucial element for catalytic converters for cars. It's also been used in manufacturing everything from jet engines and missiles to semiconductors and fertilizers. So 
It has a more diverse uses than you think, uh, but its primary use is as a catalyst. Uh, but it makes it a commodity with very real use case as a store of wealth with a much rarer supply than gold. Uh, in fact, they're saying here that it's about 30 to 1, but I think it's really about 15 to 1, 15 times more rare than gold. But it depends if you're measuring it for uh, a below ground stocks or estimates in the Earth's crust or above ground supplies or uh, below ground reserves and above ground stocks. It's a constant industrial demand. It has it. As an inflation hedge, it has its place in a diversified metals portfolio. And when the timing is right, it can even make for profitable, spe profitable speculation. In fact, it's really more about that than it is and as an inflation hedge. So I disagree with Shift Gold on that. If you bought the 2008 bottom of about $787 per ounce, um, you could have sold it in 2011 for an impressive $1,884 an ounce. And that's an extreme example. And again, that's to picking two different dates, arbitrary dates, to make a case for, for platinum. But that is probably one of the more stronger cases. Um, and of course, it went down below that in 2020, as I've discussed uh, just before. And by the way, stay tuned. I'm going to show you later in this video the difference between the look of platinum and silver in a proof coin. So stay tuned for that. Um, now, Platinum Investment Council's outlook, the World Platinum Investment Council, WPICs, for 2024 is for the trend to continue as uh, relative supply remains in a deficit. And we see that the, the opportunity is there for to climb up uh, dramatically, and they're seeing that as well. In 2024, despite global economic growth that is expected to be slower than 2023, at 3% based on the most recent IMF forecast, we expect the platinum market to remain in a deficit of 350,000 ounces. And that's a lot of deficit for a metal that has very few uh, ounces that are mined per year. Because of how reliant the demand of platinum is on jewelry and industrial applications, desire for the metal tends to wane during recessions, and that's totally understandable. But it has secured itself as an important role in the manufacturing of more products and technologies than most people realize. Catalytic converters are still one of its most important industrial uses. Electric vehicles rely on platinum as well. In fact, platinum is being used in the development of a lot of green energy technologies, which sometimes have the added investment benefit of being subsidized by governments. Platinum's usefulness in the sector has led to concerns, especially by groups like the International Energy Forum, that limited global platinum supply could even challenge the global transition to renewable energy sources. As the IEF notes, governments around the world are approving numerous measures that subsidize clean hydrogen and EV fuel cells, both of which require platinum. In the U.S., for instance, according to the report, the Inflation Reduction Act aims to accelerate clean hydrogen production and fuel cell EV adoption and include a generous tax incentive for low-carbon hydrogen. Well, I call it the, the Inflate Inflation Act, but nonetheless, it has nothing to do with inflation. It's really of a green energy, green new deal push, uh, but nonetheless, it's going to benefit eventually platinum because there's it's creating this demand for by government decree. The World Platinum uh, Investment Council thinks that by 2040, these technologies could account for 35% of worldwide platinum demand, while some other sources of industrial demand could wane in the meantime. The tendency of governments to all try to outdo each other and who can support the most green tech makes it easy to see the real medium is no longer the potential for platinum as a result. Now, there's a caveat to this. I've reported on it, that silver very well could replace platinum in the future as a uh, in, in the use for hydrogen fuel cells. And this is the point where I'm going to show you the difference between platinum and uh, silver in terms of its reflectivity and its look. You can see there is a clear difference here between the two metals and how they look with each other. It's pretty amazing, pretty stark, I would say. Um, and when you hold them up to, next to one another, there is, it's very easy to tell the difference. Silver is the most reflective metal 
but obviously it's much less dense and it has a little different feel to it in its reflective surfaces and even its frosted surfaces. So just thought I'd point that out. But again, there are caveats that could potentially uh, squelch that bull run, but I think we're still a little ways off for that. I think Toyota is testing silver in that regard. And I think they are the leader for, for hydrogen fuel cell technology for use in automobiles. Demand could easily outpace supply depending on which developments become winners in the race for renewables. Meanwhile, new environmental standards uh, like changing emission requirements for vehicles and renewable energy minimums will continue to evolve the platinum demand going forward. Platinum investors are also always watching the COMEX, a global derivatives market for uh, commodities for signs. In January, April, July, and October are major months to watch for platinum with lots of end of quarter open interest that goes down against first position approaches. First position is when contracts need to roll, meaning investors take the profit loss and roll the contract for future month or stand to take delivery, like take physical ownership of the metal, depending on factors like current supply, industrial demand, and how many futures contracts will settle. Investors can make a nice profit if they understand COMEX supply dynamics and their timing is right and global dynamics and, and geopolitics and everything does play some role, but not as much in the platinum market. In 2022, someone may have done just that when an anomaly in the platinum futures market indicated an investor may have taken advantage of limited supply, appearing to play a game of chicken with COMEX by threatening to take physical delivery of platinum that they knew didn't actually exist in the COMEX vaults. A single trader or a group of traders took a little risk by playing their hand like they would take delivery. They forced the COMEX into paying a huge premium to not have to deliver the metal it doesn't have. While the, this degree of sophistication may not be far beyond the average investor, events like this highlight the relative scarcity and delicate nature of the platinum market. I'm putting that in there. Um, so there's a potential scenario where this market could be cornered if substantial buying occurs. This coupled with the COMEX failing to meet delivery obligations could lead to a substantial surge in platinum prices. So if any market could be cornered uh, and uh, you know or squeezed, it would be the platinum market. Uh, and that is one way that we could see the price uh, go up dramatically. So I think there's some potential there for platinum. Doesn't mean it will happen. I thought it would happen much sooner than it has now. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I remain bullish on the metal and I remained and I'm still am poised to hold on to it. And I may even buy more this year, uh, but we'll see. I've already bought one uh, late last year. I bought this dragon, this platinum dragon, a beautiful coin indeed. Let me know what your thoughts are on the platinum market. And I hope you found this video informative, insightful and educational. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.